In November, MSHA received a phone call. A mining accident had occurred at a local mine. Inspectors proceeded to the mine to assist in the investigation. The accident involved a radio-controlled miner. The miner operator had been crushed by a continuous miner and was in very, very serious condition. Yeah, I lost uh, my left kidney. I lost my spleen. Uh, I lost about two inches, smashed off the end of my pancreas, and they put some drain tubes in it, and they saved it. I had extensive damage to my left lung, and they had to rebuild the chest wall cavity, and uh, done a lot of damage to my bowels. I thought was going to, they was going to lose them, but they'd done a lot of repairing on them. Broke my arm in three different places. I got a steel plate from my wrist about three quarters of the way up my elbow. It broke my uh, collarbone on the right, or on the left side, and another little bone beside of it, and fractured my back in four places. The use of radio technology has removed the miner from the hazards of cutter drums and dust, and withdrawn them from the areas of major roof falls. However, the new technology has introduced new hazards into the mining industry. Statistics show that 43 serious accidents and fatalities have occurred due to contact of persons with remote controlled miners. This video will show you where not to be during various mining situations and to raise your awareness when working with or near continuous remote controlled mining machines. Those are two safety slogans that uh, I wanted to steal in your guys' mind. And by the head, out by the boom when we're moving from place to place, except at a support of cross cut. And if I can make that minor tram to hit me or hit somebody else, I'm in the wrong spot. The program that we put on yesterday at the mine is developed because uh, of the rash of problems that we've have occurred in the state in, uh, and nationwide, of course. But with the remote control miners, where minor operators are operating a miner in an unsafe location, crushing themselves or crushing other individuals between the miner and the, and the coal rib. Also, we had some problems with extended cut miners where the miner operator to operate the remote control miner were going in by a supported roof while op operating a remote control miner. We knew that they didn't have to go in by a supported roof to operate that piece of equipment, but they was doing so. And uh, we wanted to find out the reason why. So we did an in-depth survey at all the mines uh, on site, underground, watched the miner operators talked to them, interviewed them, and wanted to pinpoint the problems or why they was going in by a supported roof or staying beside the miner in pinch point areas while they was operating. We are in support of uh, extended cut mining. We know it's very vital to the mining industry and for y'all to have jobs, but we want safe jobs. And if we do it properly and, and follow the, all the precautions in the roof control plan, all the laws, it, it'll work. So this safety program is just to identify where you cannot be. And fellas, that's easy for me to say that. But I know, especially in 50 inches of height, and you um, tramming that miner, it's easy on the first shift of the week. You get towards the last shift at the end of the week, and it's been a rough week, and we're tired. You know, that takes a large commitment, but that's what we need for you guys to do. The law does require that once you start an extended cut, which is more than 20 feet into the unsupported area, that you stay two full rows out by unsupported roof. So that means if you cut out one of these roof bolts right here, then that line moves back to the next line. I also want to describe uh, a fatality that, that occurred in an entry. Minor operator positioned to A run, or took in A run, he was uh, backing out. At this particular mine, they was using scoop for haulage. The minor operator started backing the miner out of the cut, he decided to stay along the right coal rib as he was backing the miner out past him. He had a uh, remote uh, control box. Uh, during the uh, investigation, it was determined that the cable was laying on top of the tram controls. The miner had come over, crushed and killed him. Plus, the, the miner operator definitely is in the wrong spot. He should never position himself in between that pinch point area and the, uh, and the miner. 
If he was going to come up here and get that cable, you need to make sure you shut that miner off. Don't only just stop tramming, but shut that miner off. Another thing was wrong with the remote control unit uh, with this miner was uh, that the tram controls on this miner are the self-locking center valve. The locks was in the tape up position, allowed uh, that didn't have to be pulled up to be activated. The fellas, that's, you know, there's two things wrong. We should never render ineffective a safety device. Even with the lever, uh, levers taped up, the miner operator, if he'd have been in a safe operating distance from that remote control miner, he wouldn't have been crushed. If you can convince him or show him, hey, this is why you can't be here at his particular mine site, and if you can convince him to say, hey, this is not, this is not right, we got problems, this is the problem areas we're having, and if you continue to stay there, if that's the way you do it, you know, you're more than likely going to end up a statistic. The miner operator was positioned in by supported roof and in by the three roof bolts that was cut out. He was sitting on an oil can on this left hand side. He was in an extended cut and uh, where a large piece of rock had fell on top of him, crushed and killed him. Now, fellas, as much emphasis as we placed on staying in uh, under supported roof, you know, here's another fatality that occurred. We've done a lot of studies, a lot of surveys, talked to miner operators. Why are we going in by supported roof to operate a remote control miner? We know we don't have to. And if you go to a mine and I'm observing a miner operator take a cut, you can really tell when a guy is operating a piece of equipment in his normal fashion or if he's operating it from an area that he's not usually operating and he's having problems. But throughout the survey and the interviews I did with the miner operators themselves, I said, hey, why don't you move over to this location, like on the offside of the miner when you get into extended cut when you can't see the operating head anymore. If it's the outlet side of the scrubber system, if they're using the scrubber system, he says, I don't like to be on the outlet side of my scrub. Or, well, if he doesn't have a miner helper, he says, well, you know, I've got to watch my miner cable over here. If that miner operator does not elect to go to that left side, and he elects to stay on this right side. Once he gets in there 20, 25 feet, he cannot see his cutting drums from this location right here. I asked minor operators during the survey, how do you stay on centers once you can't see? Well, when that buggy leaves out there, I'll come over here, I'll crawl over here, I'll look down my sight lines, cut down me a buggy, and then I'll crawl back down to here, say. Well, yeah, that's okay, but that's a lot of crawling. And then what that does, especially in 50 inches height or lower, you know, that puts you in the way of the haulage equipment coming to you. Fellas, anybody that's in that uh, working place for an extended period of time, whether he's a minor operator, minor helper, or myself, electrician, section boss, it doesn't matter, we need to make sure that we are, we are very visible. And, you know, I think all of us should wear the reflective clothing. On these two safety slogans, uh, in by the head, out by the boom when we're moving from place to place, except at a support of cross cut. And if I can make that minor tram to hit me or hit somebody else, I'm in the wrong spot. Say a minor helper was going to a low, or help him move to a next place. It was an off standard minor. And the uh, loop was on the back of the boom. So the minor operator attempts to back up a few feet. The, Signal went bad or whatever the case may be, but the miner operator crushed the miner helper with the boom of the miner. It wasn't a, it wasn't a fatality, but it was it was a disabling uh, permanently disabling uh, injury. So, fellas, that's why it's very important that reflective material um, being in a visible location and staying safe operating distance from the miner, staying out of the way of the haulage equipment, and staying underneath supported roof during extended cut. Fellas, those guys ain't any different than you or I. When they went to work that day, they thought they was going to come home safe and sound just like they left. The red areas in these drawings are the danger zones. Here are some best practices when working near the danger zones. Be sure the cutting head is against the working face before you position yourself or others alongside the continuous miner outside the danger zone. And while extracting coal, it's best to leave two rows of roof bolts between you and the unsupported roof. Always position yourself and others out by the conveyor boom while repositioning the machine. When tramming, never place yourself in a location where you might be exposed to a sudden movement of the machine. 
stay in by the head or out by the boom, except where you can place yourself in a supported crosscut. Don't forget about haulage equipment and wear reflective clothing so other equipment operators can see you. Remember, anyone in the danger zone is likely to be injured by the sudden and unanticipated movement of a remote controlled miner. Always remember during retreat mining that there are other danger zones to take into consideration. Never work in by the continuous mining machine while cutting coal. Foreman, when inspecting for hazards, always evaluate the locations of persons to ensure that no one is in the danger zone. Continuous evaluation of the roof and rib is vital to ensure that adverse roof and rib conditions are detected and controlled during mining. I was really someplace I shouldn't have been. Something that I've done lots of times, but it just finally caught up with me. I mean, there's stuff you gotta do. I mean, at times you gotta get near the danger zone, but when the, your tram and the miner don't get around it, I mean, it's, I mean, I know how everybody's got their own habits. I've, I've not, I don't feel that I've done anything that any other miner operator hasn't done. But when you're moving equipment, don't get in there where you can get yourself smashed or pinched or tangled up around that miner cable and don't never trust those rippers. Don't never get around that miner head because you never know when something's going to happen and they're going to kick on and if you got that cable loaded up on that it could just suck you right in there right now and there's it's just like in your tram and minor place to place don't even get in the danger zone in because you know a man never knows when a pq switch is going to go out and kick it sideways or something you know so many things can happen and you just just don't get yourself in a pinch point stay out of the danger zone